Before we discuss repairing compressor valves, we need to talk about the three types of valves you may come across. Feather, plate, and channel valves. All three types of valves work in much the same way, even though their construction varies. The basic parts common to all three are a valve seat, one or more movable parts usually held in place by spring tension, and a guard or stop plate. Here's how the parts work together in a discharge valve. As the piston compresses air in the cylinder, the pressure of the air rises, overcoming the spring tension and the air pressure in the discharge piping. When the piston reverses its stroke, the air pressure in the discharge piping and the spring tension in the valve overcome the air pressure in the cylinder. This pressure difference closes the valve, preventing air from returning to the cylinder. Keep in mind what we just saw was the operation of a discharge valve, but inlet valves work identically. Their operation is simply the opposite of the discharge valve. Well, now that you know basically how compressor valves work, let's look closer at each type and explain how it works in greater detail. We'll start with the feather valve. Now this example is two valves in one, an inlet valve and a discharge valve. The parts of this typical feather valve include a valve seat with two ports drilled through it and two feathers, one of which is visible here. The feathers are flexible strips of steel attached to one end of the seating surface by rivets. The upper feather acts as a discharge valve. The lower feather, the one you can't see, covers the other port and acts as an inlet valve. Above the seat and the feathers is a guard plate that contains an inlet port and a discharge pipe. On a downstroke, the pressure differential across the valve causes external air pressure to push open the lower feather allowing air into the cylinder while holding the upper feather shut. On an upstroke, the pressure in the cylinder shuts the lower feather and pushes the upper feather open. Our second type of valve is the plate valve. It contains a valve seat, a guard plate, and a movable part called a valve plate. The valve plate is held against the seat by a series of coil springs. Now in this configuration, the air path between the inlet and the outlet is blocked. On an upstroke, air pressure in the cylinder overcomes both the pressure in the discharge piping and the spring tension, lifting the valve plate and unblocking the air path of the discharge piping. The motion of the valve plate is guided by two pins on the valve seat. After the compressed air in the cylinder escapes, the combination of the pressure in the discharge piping and spring tension is great enough to overcome air pressure in the cylinder. This causes the valve plate to shut, closing off any backflow of compressed air from the discharge piping. Now, our third type of valve is the channel valve. This is the type installed in the compressor that we're going to overhaul. First, let's look at its parts and then see how the valve moves. A channel valve is made up of three basic components, a valve seat, a stop plate, and the movable parts, the channels. In addition, it has channel guides and leaf springs. The channel in a channel valve acts like the feathers or valve plates in other valves. The channel sits on the valve seat and blocks the air path between the inlet and the outlet. A leaf spring holds the channel against the valve seat. The stop plate has raised areas that hold the leaf spring against the channel. The channel guide holds the channels and directs its up and down motion. Before we can fully understand how this channel valve moves, we need to look at exactly how the valve is positioned in the casing. There are two parts which hold the valve in place. The inner cover, which screws to the valve, and an outer cover that bolts to the cylinder's casing. The outer cover has a bolt which is threaded through the cover and presses on the inner cover to hold the valve in place. There's also a nut on the bolt, which prevents air from leaking out around the bolt. Since this is a discharge valve, the valve seat faces toward the cylinder. The seat of an inlet valve faces away from the cylinder. Now, if you remember this point about the orientation of the seat, you'll never make the mistake of reversing channel type discharge and inlet valves. Once this valve is properly placed in the casing, 
It works much the same as the feather and plate valves we've seen already. On an upstroke, the piston reduces the volume in the cylinder, compressing the air until its pressure is greater than the pressure in the discharge piping. Pressure in the cylinder then overcomes the discharge piping pressure and the spring tension, lifting the channel and allowing compressed air to flow out of the cylinder and into the discharge piping. After the air in the cylinder escapes, the pressure in the cylinder equals the pressure in the discharge piping and the channel closes. Well, now that we've